this is Kim Pinkney. Uh, this video is for Miller Elementary, and this is how to draw caricatures. Now, using basic shapes, I'm going to draw this character right here. This is Ryan Reynolds from who played Deadpool. And this is how I would do a caricature. I would look at the face, and I would look for the basic shapes. Like right there is where I see a square, and then I would draw a triangle beneath. You see those shapes right there. So I begin sketching very lightly with just a regular pencil. Those shapes. Usually when I do a caricature, it's a big head, little body. It kind of looks similar to a portrait. I don't do too much uh, exaggeration. So I'm splitting the square so I can see where the eyes are going to be. And the bottom of the square is kind of where the his jaw will be. And it'll kind of branch off into the triangle. Alright. But you see how his chin is kind of round. I'm going to be doing a little circle down there for the roundness of his chin. So when you're comfortable with the, where your lines are, your guidelines are, go ahead and darken it just a little bit. Eyes are usually round, but looking at his eye shape, it's kind of like a triangle shape. So I'm going to do my best to try to copy that shape. It is a, a caricature is more of a cartoon, so you can go as triangular as you like. You're trying to get uh, his, uh, you want to try to keep the aspects of what looks like the person so that you capture their likeness. And you see how the nose kind of looks like a triangle shape? And on the ends, they look like circles. So I kind of add those circles, and then you'll see how it has kind of like a curve for the nostrils. So I kind of add that as well. Now with this, this smile, usually I like to take smiles and just like make them almost ear to ear. I try to follow the shape of what his mouth looks like. His lips are kind of cool because they, they also have kind of like a triangle shape. And to try to keep the uh, likeness of the character, I follow what the lines of his eyes look like. His eyes are kind of hooded, so you'll see like a little line come off of um, his eye eyelid and extend towards his, uh, the bridge of his nose. He's got some uh, kind of like thick eyebrows, but they're, they're a little low to the eye, so just kind of follow that shape. For exaggeration purposes, you can make them bigger or thicker. You know, you want to try to keep the likeness of the person. So if you're exaggerating, sometimes people like to exaggerate the nose first. Sometimes people like to uh, move the lips a little higher to the nose, make the chin really long. He's got a big nose, so you can go as large as you like. He's also got like a little roundness to his nose, so I added that there. And he's got like bumps on his nose, so I added those as well. So here I am just darkening up uh, the lips. harder but I'm not pressing too hard where I can't erase. 
and you just try to find the lines in his face. Now he's got a curve um, off, his, off his, the side of his face, his cheekbones to his jaw, his jawline. So what I was doing was trying to get that or copy that shape. He's got a very distinctive hairline, and that's what I'm getting right there. It's got it comes in at a point above his eyebrows. And when you smile, the little bags under your eyes appear. And usually for the eyes, I don't get too detailed. Um, I usually just put the uh, eye light highlight and then the, the dark circle in the eye. Okay, so now looking at his mouth again. It's little details like that that help you keep the lightness going. It's okay if it doesn't look exactly like him. It's not supposed to be uh, exactly like the person. It's just supposed to capture some of the details of his face. So that when you look at it, you go, Oh, that's Ryan Reynolds. Now you can get... Uh, you could get crazy with the eyebrows if you want. You, you just kind of want to single out a distinctive feature. Sometimes people have so symmetrical of a face that it's hard to pull it out. And caricatures are supposed to bring out a, a feeling, evoke an emotion. Me is like, it's like, ah, but other people are like, oh my gosh, that type of thing. So you can get exaggerating, you can exaggerate as much as you want. You can uh, make the jaw even bigger, you can make the chin even longer, and that's what I end up doing, is I make the chin a lot longer. Because he, he seems to, like, if you squint your eyes, that chin really sticks out at you, and so does his forehead. Also, caricature artists have to work fast uh, because sometimes they're working with live people. So you want to uh, get your lines down as quick as possible. Right here, I'm just kind of showing you the basics of how I would do it. Alrighty, he's got these little lines in his head that denote um, his forehead and I add those in there. I'm not drawing each and every single line, but I am giving an impression of where uh, his face is. Now you can go crazy on the ears if you want. Like the ears that I'm drawing are nowhere near the size of how big his ears truly are. But you can make those bigger if you want. Just as long as you keep the dimensions of, uh, or actually his, uh, the details of his features. And I'll draw more caricatures so that you'll be able to see um, what I mean by how much you can, you can push the image. And still try to keep it recognizable. Usually when I do the big head, little body, I give them a tiny, tiny neck. His, his chin extends so far that it would cover the neck. See, here I am trying to get the, uh, the angle of his face. He's got a very long looking face. The jaw that pops out and comes in at an angle. Now 
sometimes you'll do a caricature and you'll be like, I just don't see the likeness. Sometimes the likeness doesn't come in until after you add the color. Sometimes it's like that. So here I am just trying to get the, uh, the jawline going. And he's got an Adam's apple, so you can always add that in there, and you can make it as big as you want. Okay, I saw that I was kind of losing the box shape of his face, so I started adding to his jawline a little bit more. Sometimes when you draw, you want to have your drawing at an angle, so that you'll catch little details. It's kind of difficult to draw flat and still be able to maintain uh, the shape. Because you're seeing your, your eyes are looking at a certain angle. That's why a lot of caricatures are drawn um, with easels. They can have it up and almost next to the person's face when they're drawing. Now, I didn't do all of his um, razor stubble on his face. Not just yet. Um, I wanted to add that with the color. And what I'm doing here is just giving some light shading to give dimension to his face. And uh, when you have, when you work from a photograph, you want to try to keep that dimension going and uh, know where your light source is. That's coming uh, from the other side of his face, so it casts a shadow on the other side of his nose. When you add that shadow on the other side of the nose, it makes the nose pop out a little bit more. So when you start to get comfortable, you start to look at more of the details of his face. His eyes come down at a, at a really crazy angle where it really brings out that triangle shape. You don't see his eyelashes so much, so I don't add them too much. But you do see them um, on the bottom of his eyelid, and I'll be adding those. You don't have to draw every individual hair. You can just draw the shape, and then where it's darkest, you can add the dark colors in there. Now, his forehead is really big, so that's one thing I'd like to emphasize. As you start to draw, your own style will come out. How you draw your hair, how you draw your faces, if you like to do a few lines to make the, uh, the funny impression, or if you like to draw a lot of lines, kind of like me, how you like to do the, uh, to capture his look. Just remember, this is a cartoon, and you can push and pull like a Bugs Bunny cartoon as much as you want, as long as you can kind of keep his shape. some of the things that give him his likeness there. When you draw the hair, go ahead and map out the basic shape, and then you can start adding little details, like um, since his hair is really uh, close cropped to his head, I keep it tied to his head, and I just uh, show that it's hair by adding some little uh, fuzzy strands on the side. And here I'm just adding uh, uh, refining details on his, uh, his face. And I'll be darkening in some lines.
Now since he is Deadpool, I want to use Deadpool's body, so I'm looking for his picture. There's a little cartoon um, that has uh, Deadpool in it that I'm going to use. I was at the laundromat, so I didn't have my computer with me, so I had to improvise. And sometimes when you're a caricature artist, you have to improvise as well. Okay, so here is Deadpool. I could do him straight on, but it's boring, so I decided to do the little, the, the little body next to it. Now, I purposefully like to use a um, little body. Okay, now you see basic shapes in there. His chest is kind of like a triangle shape. His uh, thighs are almost like a, tri a triangle shape. And then his uh, feet are like round circles. His arms are a little tricky. Try to follow the design as much as you can and break it down into its shapes. Okay? So I'm going to erase the jaw, I mean uh, the neck, because his head drops below his shoulders. And cuts into his chest a little bit. Now, usually I would make the body really tiny. But um, I think I made it just a little too big on this go around, so I'm going to draw it out. I don't want it to be symmetrical. It ruins the idea of um, the cartoon. I don't want it to be too realistic. So I'll, you'll see me draw it and then um, it'll disappear and I'll, I'll be redrawing it again on a different shape, different size. Invincible. But usually when I do a, a caricature, it's going to be much smaller than this. So you see the triangle shape that I tried to create. His shoulder is round. You can get away with doing a round ball. It fits into his forearm, or his upper arm rather. And then there's his forearm is pretty thick. And then his hand kind of makes a square shape and comes down in like two fingers and a, and a thumb so you can draw virtually anything as long as you can break it down into basic shapes Now what I'm doing is kind of sketching, and I'm doing it very lightly so that I can erase if I don't like it, or if I need to adjust anything. Plus it also helps you to find the placement. Now when you're doing a caricature, um, your head is usually the most important thing that people are looking at. The pose is secondary. It's, it, I think of it kind of like an ego thing. You're trying to capture the person's persona, their ego, and their head is usually bigger than the rest of their body. The head is the most important part. So I didn't like the shape, so what I did is I ended up erasing it with my kneaded eraser. And I'm going to retry it one more time. Sometimes you do that, but as a caricature artist, sometimes you, you work in pen so that you can be as fast as you possibly can. When you get comfortable, see now I made the, the chest significantly smaller. And usually I would make it even smaller than that. But um, I I want to just go ahead and keep going, but usually I would make it much smaller. Big head, little body, and that's kind of funny too, looking at that as well. So you try to get the shape as much as possible. I have my triangle shape, and then I will go again with another, uh, more like round circles or ovals. Just follow, if you are using a source material, just follow your source material. Is it, how is it looking to you? And you can deviate if you want. You can add different source materials, um, different arms, different legs, and stuff like that. You can have one leg up, one leg down, one leg kicking forward if you wanted to. Um, just as long as it looks like it makes sense. But it's a cartoon, so you can just go with it. Yeah. 
So here I am. Um, they look like triangle shapes, but they're also oval. So I'm just trying to follow that as best as possible. The only proportions you really have to keep up with are the proportions of the pieces to themselves. Um, the head is going to be separate from the rest of the body, pretty much, because it's cartoon. Sometimes you'll see uh, big heads, little bodies. Sometimes you'll see uh, like chibi. Think chibi. But Chibi doesn't have that much detail as far as um, definition. And you can get away with that with um, caricatures as well. It depends on whatever your style you decide to go with. What makes you feel comfortable, what makes you smile. keep adding more details as I see them. One arm is going back and the other arm is going to be somewhat forward but reaching for the sword so it's also kind of angled backwards as well. Now usually when I draw caricatures um, People like to be superheroes, and sometimes I draw them without the mask. Uh, that's why I don't have Deadpool's mask on Ryan Reynolds' face. I was thinking about putting it maybe as a hat, or dangling it from his fingers, like I could have added it um, in his hand, and I chose not to. The most important thing um, is that I captured the Ryan Reynolds scene. Okay, so that we have the triangle shape of his uh, forearm and then um, the circle shape. And don't be afraid to sketch lightly. Um, you'll need an eraser. Keep that nearby. Because you're just starting out. There we go. So you will make mistakes. And even I keep an eraser nearby just to uh, clean up my lines as well. When I'm comfortable with the lines that I have, I'm going to use a marker or a pen to determine, you know, to make it much more bold. Okay, so here I am drawing a sword, but I have to make sure that the sword makes sense. It, it can't be bent around his back or whatnot like that. So I have to make sure my lines meet. If you have to draw through your character to make sure your lines meet, go ahead and do that. It doesn't hurt to have a ruler nearby either, but sometimes you don't have, you only have sometimes a pencil and a pen, or just a pen and your um, marker, so. And always think round, okay? This, these are people, three-dimensional shapes, and we're trying to capture that, so any shadows that you see, you want to go ahead and add those as well. To get a really good character, caricature, you want to be outrageous. You want to go ahead and go for it. his muscles considerably bigger. I could have made his hand much bigger. You can emphasize anything that you want that you think is important to uh, get your little smile across. You want to make him a muscle man, you can make his his torso even smaller. You see how I made his waist like really tiny? I could have made it even smaller than that. Go ahead and move your paper if you need to. Uh, sometimes some caricatures, caricature artists don't have the luxury of, of spinning their paper around. Sometimes it's clipped uh, to the board. But to get the angle right on the sword, I had to go ahead and spin the paper. And just keep making adjustments. You'll see them as you go. Now typically it takes me 
if I'm doing a caricature at my leisure, like say I'm doing it at home for someone's birthday or quinceanera or something like that, if I'm doing that at home, I take my time and usually a picture takes about four hours from start to finish if I, if I don't know exactly how I want it to, to come out. So I give myself some time to work on it just so I can get things just right. But when you're doing a, a live caricature, it shouldn't take you more than 15, 15 minutes altogether. So you want to work as fast as you want, as possible because, like, if you're working at Bush Gardens where I had learned how to do these, you have to be fast. People want to go back to their rides. It's hot outside, and sometimes you have a crowd that that comes around you, um, especially when you're drawing something funny. Uh, when you have a crowd that's around you. Um, it gets hotter because they're taking up more space, they're making noises, they're making the person that uh, you're drawing laugh and distract them. It, it can be a lot of fun because every, everybody feeds off of each other. But um, while you're at home and you're relaxed, um, take your time. But you want to do, if you do want to do these, you want to work on your speed. Now your hair will, uh, depending on how detailed you want to get it, it can be just as si simple as some dark, um, some dark spots, and then the color of the, the hair. I'll do another video um, on how to get some some good hair going, but just keep in mind that it is a cartoon, and you really want to keep your shape simple. It's the face that that draws everybody to it. I have a lot of caricatures on my channel. Um, each of the quin the, the birthday uh, quinceanera sweet sixteen uh, pictures are all caricatures drawn from uh, photographs. I have uh, caricatures in my Crayola uh, playlist of different people, and sometimes the caricature begins with, "I wonder what it would look like." if. So this is what Deadpool would look like if you saw Ryan Reynolds playing it. And if I wanted to I could have like a little cartoon of Deadpool going, that's me, he's playing me. And if you've caught the movie Deadpool, you'll see him uh, uh, with Ryan Reynolds pictures all over the place every now and then, you know, making fun of himself, which is really funny. Deadpool is one of my favorites. Um, I used to read his comic books when I, back when I was younger, and uh, I thought he looked like Spider-Man, but he definitely did not act like Spider-Man. And, and every comic seemed to <laughs> make fun of him because he looked like Spider-Man. You know, even the even the characters inside. Now I've been doing caricatures. Uh, let's see, for let's see, since two thousand, two thousand two, since two thousand three. So that's about what thirteen years. I've been doing caricatures for thirteen years, but I've been drawing all my life. I am forty five years old, so I have been drawing. <laughs> Oh, a good portion of that time just doing pictures. Now not all of them turned out really good, but what I did to get better was that I geeked myself out on stuff that I liked. I liked drawing people, and people were always a challenge, and I would also find things that uh, I wanted to see. So like I grew up with Bugs Bunny cartoons, that was our thing. It was They were my Saturday morning cartoons. So I would draw them, um, and I would uh, I would keep drawing them, and and then I would change them. I would change their bodies. I would change their positions, and then I once I finally mastered and got them to look like they're supposed to, I uh, 
went ahead and I kept drawing um, more things, more things that interested me. And I just kept geeking myself out on stuff like that. I didn't have YouTube, I didn't have a mentor, I didn't have anybody um, to turn to as far as how the things work. So I would um, use comic books uh, to learn how to draw the, the human body. Um, and my comic books weren't that bad. Um, I had grown up with uh, the Conan comic books back in the day, and they were pretty, pretty anatomically correct. The comic books that you see nowadays are really distorted, and if you want to go for distorted looks, those are the really good ones to use. I also got uh, some great ideas from different other people that would draw around me. Like I learned, I would learn from other people. And I would use their style, and then and then until I I mastered it and made it my own, and I would change it. Just kept changing and evolving. So a lot of myself, my stuff is self-taught, but I also picked up other tips and tricks from um, um, books like drawing on the right side of the brain, uh, drawing the Marvel way, and things like that. And it wasn't until high school that I got good. That I finally had people stop asking me, what is that? People will always ask you, what is that? Who is that? So just take it with a grain of salt, suck it up, go, okay, that's what it is. Okay, I'm going to start inking this thing. You have different idea, uh, different uh, possibilities. I have a Crayola black marker, Crayola black um, pencil, and I also have this Prismacolor pencil. I'm going to use my Prismacolor brush pencil, and that's what the tip looks like. I can do fat lines, skinny lines, really thin lines with this one. A lot of caricature artists use a chisel tip. Um, you want to go ahead and vary your lines. For the lines on the face, you want to go ahead and carefully draw uh, your lines. And you only want to capture just enough of the lines so that you have the impression of the face. going in my next video part two of this I'm going to go ahead and show you my coloring of Ryan Reynolds using uh, Crayola markers or rather Crayola pencils and, um, and I'm using a little bit of baby oil to go ahead and uh, blend the, the colors in but uh, to finish this up I'm going to go ahead and outline And usually, uh, caricature artists will outline their stuff. You want to get all your lines first down. And keep your source material close. Because you don't want to uh, erase a line that is important. And right now, I just want to try to keep his likeness going. And how do you know you've got the likeness? Um, you want to look at your source material and go, does that look like him? And if you're drawing people, you want to look at them and go, does that look like so-and-so? And if you've accomplished that, it's like, yes! So you want to keep going, keep going. But you don't want to lose that likeness by, after, you know, as you start inking. Usually when I ink or color, you want to work from maybe one side to the other. Like I'm right-handed, I should work from left to right and going straight down. That way I don't smear my things. But sometimes I like to jump around. You'll see, you've will you seen me jump around. And sometimes it's because um, if I draw or color too long in one area, my hand starts to cramp up. So by moving to another area, it helps me to relax my hand a little bit, especially when I'm drawing for four hours straight. Um, but when you do jump around, you do run the risk of smearing your work. 
uh, pencil lines do smear. Now at this stage you don't want to, to draw every single line because um, you're going to, since I'm going to be coloring it in, I'm going to let the color give it more uh, definition. But black does add that strong hard punch so if they're not paying you, and yes, caricature artists, most of them get paid, um, you'll have to, um, if they don't want to pay for color, uh, you'll have to be bold enough with your line, your line work here, to bring out the shape, instead of um, relying on the color. Now, I'm not getting paid for this. This is uh, a favor for the teacher in Miller Elementary. And I hope you, you, you folks like this uh, little tutorial. I'll be having some more if you really like it. And if you want, go ahead and suggest, like and suggest um, things that you'd like me to, uh, people that you'd like to see. If you'd like to see uh, car uh, cartoon characters or anime characters be chibi or things like that, let me know in the comments. Um, if you have any questions at all, I will go ahead and address them in the next video or I will address them in the comments they're uh, really good questions, I'll go ahead and make a video on it. Now this is the opportunity to um, solidify those, those sketchy lines that we've created. You see how he's much more bold now. You can, you can tell exactly uh, his shape versus if you left it in pencil. Now if you do make mistakes, it's okay. Um, sometimes it can be covered up, sometimes it can be fixed with a deeper, darker line. So don't beat yourself up if you make a, a big mistake. And if you have to, you can always improvise and um, add other things. Like I've noticed that one side of his jaw is a little bit bigger than the other. That's um, a fault of mine for not tilting my paper and taking a look at it. Sometimes you got to stop what you're doing and take a look at your work and see if you're going in the right direction. Now, when you draw, or rather when you're inking, you have, um, there's a technique where you make, you alter the shapes of your lines, where, um, the lines on the very bottom are deeper and they're darker and bolder than the lines that are on top. That's a trick that caricature artists use um, to give weight to a picture. Uh, like I, how I outlined the bottom of his chin, that shadow, everything that's below that can be, um, that's, that uh, casts a shadow or is under something, you want to make that line thicker and darker. You'll see me start to darken um, and thicken lines that are on the very bottom. And it's kind of a cool uh, technique. You'll see it when uh, it starts to pop up. You'll see me making those lines on the very bottom um, heavier. Now I didn't draw all his little uh, purses, so I'm going to put those on him as well, probably in this tech in this uh, form here. And I'm following the source material. Okay, and there's one thick line. And then I'm thickening up this line right here. And you see how it gets darker and it looks like his arm is much bigger and heavier just by making that line underneath thicker and darker. Here I'm drawing the strap. These are a lot of things that I missed um, going um, in the drawing part, but I'm just adding now in the details.
This is also a good time to add um, some dimension like um, razor stubble, some of the razor stubbles that are on his face, um, to add some of the shadows that I was talking about. Um, you'll see them also in the source material. And also to emph emphasize the muscles. This is what makes the um, picture stand out a lot at this stage, is just make sure that you have different shape lines. It keeps the thing interesting. You can add action lines, little, little thin lines here and there. But you, we are going to be coloring this in, so in, uh, I'll be finishing it up in my uh, upcoming video. And I'd like to thank you for sitting through this entire tutorial with no time lapse. And I'll see you in the next video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And we'll draw some more as well later on. So go ahead and practice on your caricature using basic shapes. Vary your line weights for everything that's underneath. If your first attempt doesn't uh, come out well, just keep trying, keep trying, okay? Again, I'd like to thank you for watching. And we'll pick this up um, at the coloring at the next video. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.